Now pay close attention to this chart. It's the functional characterization of the immune system after sulforaphane or sulforaphane treatment. Basically cruciferous vegetables um, found in like broccoli, cabbage, kale, Brussels sprouts. Now, what is amazing about this? You have three groups of dots. You have the control group, the infected group without sulforaphane, and then you have the infected group with sulforaphane. Now, many may notice right off the bat, because I have a kind of tick mark there. You notice the red dots are basically those animals which are infected with sulforaphane uh, compared to those not affected at all. Isn't that amazing? Now, again, without reading too much into it, but when you look at this and you're looking and go, wow, that is just about the same as if they were never infected. Now you get to the incredible, incredible, hang on one second, incredible, interesting benefits of something such as broccoli, a sulforaphane, or a sulforaphane from cabbage, kale, or Brussels sprouts. Now, what's incredibly interesting about this is normally, you know, you would think of like your orange juice, your vitamin C, and so forth and so forth. But the amazing aspect of this is its modulation. For example, by helping navigate the immune system, as well as helping keep inflation, inflation, inflammation, or, that's all of the subject, inf, inf, inflammation or infection uh, regulated or basically mitigated down in, on its impact. Now, the reason I'm just saying that as far as like infection preventative or disease preventative is because we're not looking at uh, sulforaphane from that aspect. We're looking at it from an aspect, let's say for example, a scenario where in the future, when future studies are done, uh, there's a common cold. That's something that could potentially reduce the severity and the duration of that particular common cold. In this case, the researchers looked at SARS-CoV-2 and it yielded amazing results, more so than anything else now, as you delve into the full research, uh, the lungs in particular. But we're just gonna deal with the general aspects of it and you may look at it towards the end and say, hey, maybe we'll be replacing that chicken soup with cream of broccoli, or at least adding broccoli to the chicken soup. I don't know, I'm not a cook. But to proceed as follows, again, amazing, amazing uh, graphic there. Chemical found in leafy green showing the slow growth of COVID-19 and common cold viruses. A John Hopkins Children's Center-led study in mice and lab-grown cells found Sulforaphane could help prevent and treat illnesses caused by certain coronaviruses, including COVID-19. A lot of people aren't aware that the common cold is also a coronavirus. But to proceed, research that John Hopkins, uh, Hopkins Children's Center found report evidence from lab experiments that a chemical derived from a compound found abundantly in broccoli and other cruciferous plants, I want to say cruciferous, because if you think of iron, cruciferous plants may offer a potentially new and potent weapon against the virus that caused COVID-19 and the common cold. To reiterate, I know I repeated it twice. In a study described on March 18th in Nature Journal Communication Biology, the scientists showed that sulforaphane, a plant-derived chemical known as a phytochemical already found to have anti-cancer effects, can inhibit the replication a SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, and other human coronaviruses in cells and mice. Sulforaphane is a natural precursor, particularly abundant in broccoli, cabbage, kale, and Brussels sprouts. First identified as a chemopreventive, chemopreventive compound by a team at John Hopkins scientists decades ago. Natural sulforaphane is derived from common food sources such as broccoli seeds, sprouts, and mature plants as well as infusions of sprouts or seeds for drinking. Previous studies, including those at John Hopkins Medicine, have shown that sulforaphane had to have, anti to have cancer and infection preventive properties by the way of interfering with certain cellular processes. Kind of like um, an ACE pilot for the immune system. To proceed, in one experiment, the, researchers, the research team found first exposure, team first exposed, Cells to sulforaphane 
for one to two hours before infecting the cells with SARS-CoV-2 and the common cold coronaviruses, ACOV-0C43. They found that the low molecular weight concentrations, low molecular concentrations of sulforaphane reduced the replication by 50% of six strains of SARS-CoV-2, including the Delta and Omicron variants, as well as that of the common cold coronavirus. The investigators also observed similar results with cells that had been previously infected with the viruses, in which the protective effect of sulforaphane were seen even with an already established virus infection. The takeaway was who said like prior, imagine a scenario where you're going to work or someone's going to work per se, and they have just the common cold virus. And by infusions, either food or otherwise, of sulforaphane, there's a potential that you could actually reduce not only the severity, but the duration of that particular ailment down and yet yield you a very positive beneficial outcome. Post-infection, post-exposure. That is where they're trying to allude to, but future research needs to be conducted in people in order to basically illuminate uh, that potential outcome. Now we're gonna go into the full study. Now, the reason B is because this gives uh, Correlation per se, potential correlation of dosaging and so so and so forth and so forth uh, would give you an idea that maybe it doesn't require like massive dosing on a regular basis, especially when it comes to why sulforaphane has benefits, even though peak plasma concentrations tend to drop fairly rapidly. It may have kind of like a ripple effect to the immune system, like where you throw a pebble. And then basically these ripples have a beneficial effect on gene expression later on. But to proceed, you'll see what I mean in a second. Our results demonstrate that pharmacologically relevant micromolar concentrations of sulforaphane inhibited viral replication in virus-induced cell death in vitro. Consumption of sulforaphane-rich broccoli sprouts, single oral daily dose equivalent to 200 micromoles of sulforaphane, results in peak plasma concentrations and higher steady state levels could be achieved by administering the same dose in two divided doses. That's what's required. By comparison, sulforaphane inhibited in vitro SARS-CoV-2 replication in human cells with an IC of 50 and 2.4 of 2.4. It is important to note that the bioavailability of sulforaphane in humans is dependent on many factors, including the amount consumed, dietary form, and preparation technique and the individual's gastrointestinal micro microflora, meaning some people may respond far better to it than others and vice versa. Studies using sulforaphane-rich broccoli sprouts corresponding to 50 to 400 micromoles of sulforaphane daily have shown that sul sulforaphane is well tolerated without clinically significant adverse effects. Additionally, while sulforaphane is rapidly eliminated from plasma, it is reportedly exerts a sustained effect on gene expression. There is where the takeaway is in reference to the resonating effect. Even though it's rapidly eliminated in plasma, it made its presence known and communicates effectively through possibly gene expression. To proceed, a daily dose of sulforaphane rich broccoli sprouts corresponding to 400 micromoles or 70 milligrams, maybe that was the, the upper level of tolerability that they did the, uh, uh, basically to see if there's any adverse effects from the 50 to 400 micromoles, the test for it, 400 micromoles was the upper level, 70 milligrams. Uh, sulforaphane in humans is not equivalent to 30 milligrams a kilogram of sulforaphane used in the current mouse studies, especially if you're looking at differences in microflora. Thus, while our results are promising, additional studies in humans are needed to determine the efficacy of sulforaphane as a therapy for COVID-19 and possibly other coronaviruses such as the common cold. Now to conclude, in summary, we documented that sulforaphane can inhibit in vitro and in vivo replication of SARS-CoV-2 at pharmacologically and potentially therapeutically achievable concentrations. Further, it can modulate the inflammatory response, thereby decreasing the consequences of infection in mice when administered prior to infection. Given that sulforaphane is only bioavailable, 
commercially available, and has limited side effects. Our results suggest it can be a promising approach for the prevention and treatment of COVID-19, as well as other coronavirus or coronavirus infections, i.e. as the common cold. Further studies are needed to address these possibilities, in particular, human trials. Now, think about that. And this is where you have to give a lot of gratitude to the researchers as follows. You're dealing with a substance, sulforaphane, uh, from cruciferous vegetables, which potentially could be common around the world. Rich nations, poor nations, middle income nations, so on and so forth. So when basically something like this potentially could have, uh, live in the specter of, per se, I'm trying to word, parse my words carefully as not to be censored. Uh, generally, by just increasing consumption of these crucif cruciferous, cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, kale, spinach, Brussels sprouts, so on and so forth, it can create an incredible benefit of basically, how would you describe it? Uh, yielding far better outcomes in a very, very, very simple dietary intervention. In fact, if anything that has been addressed over the past couple of years it is the incredible, incredible, powerful impact that positive diet has just on about everything. But still, just the same. Gratitude to the John Hopkins researchers. Great way of looking at broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, so on and so forth. Think about it if you're sending your kids off to school and you know the common cold cycle that goes on and on. What a great and simple and healthy way to help elevate the immune system to fend off such nasty things per se. Provided, you know, you can find a way of dressing up the broccoli, Brussels sprouts, so on and so forth. But still just the same. Gratitude to the researchers. And again, forgive the echo, the stage, so on and so forth. Still, I want to make sure we get this information out because some incredible, incredible, incredible great stories, uh, research articles, I should say, not stories, uh, basically that need to be heard. And in a very humble way, we do it on our own, which still I like to allude to with a long goodbye. I am humbled as always that you watch and hopefully we'll get in a regular routine come upcoming and just the same. Thank you. Gratitude. And I'll see you all next time. Catch you then. Bye.